welcome to my channel. Um, I have a special guest today, first time in front of the camera, very, very nervous, so I hope she'll settle down as the interview goes along. The whole idea of these interviews are to help transgendered people in their journey, and what, how better than to hear other people's experiences. So, I have a special guest here today. It's always good to have somebody when you're transitioning, somebody you can use as a reference point. Somebody who's actually gone through quite a lot of the things that you're bound to go through in the future. And what better way to know some of the pitfalls and some of the things that happened to you along the way. And I would just like to introduce... Hi, I'm you. Sarah. And you come from where, Sarah? Essex. Come from Essex originally. Originally. And of course, you're in sunny Bedfordshire now. Not so bad sunny, by the way, is it at the moment? But there you go. Let's look forward to the summer, Sarah. You know, when we get all this muck out of the way, we can wear our dresses again and flowery dresses and things like that. Don't you agree? Yeah. 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 So we have all these dresses we've been buying, and the wardrobes are absolutely brimming, brimming. The doors are opening and everything. We just can't get out. It's an awful situation to be in, but we have to do our best during these bad times, don't we, Sarah? We do. We do. Okay, right, so Sarah, where did it all start? Well, I guess you could say probably very, very young. Um, for earliest memories, I suppose, really, when I was about five years old. Five years old, that's a long time before yes. I actually did. Yes. I actually did. Because we didn't have things like references like books or, you know, what's marvellous nowadays is the internet yeah, and, yeah. and things like this. Or even other people that we could actually talk to as well. Mm. So I don't know how you felt, but myself, I just thought I knew there was something different. Uh, but I just thought I was weird. Yeah. So I kind of yeah. like just buried it really. So, yeah. I mean, how, was, how did you do deal with it? I just hid it away, really. I mean, as, I, as you said, I felt weird. I felt like there was something wrong with me. Um, I guess you could say I felt a lot different to anyone else. I didn't really get on with other boys in school. I didn't really enjoy doing any boys' sports, things like that, you know? I just It just wasn't me. So, but as you said, there was no internet. I didn't know what was wrong with me. Not that there is anything wrong with me, but... Of course, you didn't really know that at that time. No, I didn't. Know? No. And uh, with me, the, yes, I was tall, I was skinny, and all this kind of thing. And with sports, really, I was not actually no good at football or rugby or all those typical types of ones. Mm. But I just found my little niche, really, on things that I could actually do, which was running. Um, basketball even came into it because I was quite tall. So I kind of like latched onto those things really, yeah. um, to just to hide the football and the rugby and the macho type of thing, and just go like for the skill levels. But if you think about it, quite a lot of those things are where we're on our own. Yeah. But you yeah. actually had something that you did ath athletic. Yeah. And what was that? Tell us uh, a bit more about I used, that. Well, I used to do trampolining and gymnastics. Did a bit of competing in front of people, which is awkward for me because I'm quite shy. Um, but you could really call that a solo sport as well, really. Mm. Um, I thought I was quite good. I competed at national level at one point, but not very good. Don't get me wrong, I knew where my level was. Um, and that was kind of my get out, in a way. I got sort of concentrated on that to take my mind off how I felt, really. Do you see me see yourself as a team player? Uh, occasionally, occasionally. I wouldn't say I'm a team leader or I enjoy group activities. I'm quite shy like that. I'm very much a lonesome person, really. See, one of the one of the things that uh, gets us ready for like being in teams and uh, working together and things like this is a typical thing like football. Mm. You know, where you're working out a strategy and it takes a few of you to do that and to play along and things. Where we didn't do that kind of thing. And we were like souls, just, you know, running mm. on my own and you doing your trampolining on your own. Is 
they were the things I think that we missed out on doing team building yeah. things. Yeah, I mean, you know? we, we were in a team. Yeah. It weren't as if I was just on my own all the time. Obviously, we had team members and things, but yeah, you, what you did, you did by yourself. Yeah, so it didn't take somebody else to contribute to what you were doing. It was solely down to you mm. in that, mm. and, and it was for mine as well. Mm. I think as I kind of like grew up and things, where I didn't have that kind of thing, I think I had to push myself. I had to push myself in certain areas. Yeah, I needed like, to be better. Like my singing in front of, um, well, first of all, it was 20 people, then it went to 500 people, then it went to 2,000 people. So even though I was absolutely totally outside my comfort zone, I knew that if I was going to get anywhere, I'd have to push myself. Mm. And it was mm. pushing myself outside the comfort zone, outside the comfort zone, and outside the comfort zone. So how did you deal with that? I just concentrated on what I needed to do, really. Um, as I said, with the trampoline in the routines, you learned your routine in training. And I kind of guess you just went into automatic pilot, really. Once I was on the trampoline, it was just concentrating on what I needed to do. Other than that, you would just sit in the background waiting for your turn, really. Mm. So, when did you particularly really know that um, I've got to do something about this and I can't hide away? Or a little bit before then, really, is how did you express yourself, even like in private and things? Uh, I, like most of us, when we all started out, we had a selection of clothes. Um, when I had time to myself, I would dress up, if you could call it that. Um, kind of experimented with things and makeup and various other things that you would do to try and make yourself feel more comfortable. And I think that's what it was. It was a comfort thing. Um, I'd get home from work and the first thing I wanted to do was get changed. It was almost as if the clothes I was wearing during the day weren't my clothes. Um, yeah, and that's really how I dealt with it was, I might be on my own for the rest of the night. I didn't need to be anyone and anyone else, but I was just dressed how I felt I should be dressed. Did you feel very, very restrictive because you were on your own and you was in the house? At the, at the time, I'd probably have to say no. But because that was because I was still hiding away. Um, obviously, it, the further along in life, when I finally realised who I was um, and met other girls, that made me want to be around other girls and want to get out more. Before then, no, I just hid myself away, as probably a lot of girls do. So how did you find other girls to meet up with at that time? It's the glory of the internet. Mm. Um, you asked yourself questions. And instead of asking yourself, you ask Google. Um, you get the words into your head. Transgender, transvestite, cross-dresser. And you learn. Basically, you type it in and you try to find out as much information as you could. And it was only when I analysed that and analysed myself along with that information that I knew what I was and who I was. And it was then that I started to find out about different sites, different clubs, different places to go. And that's when it all snowballed, really. That's when I knew and I became more comfortable with myself. That was the main thing. I was uncomfortable with who I was. And it was only when... I realised what was going on in my body, my head. I became more comfortable with who I was. With me, when I was uh, younger, and I didn't particularly know who I was and things like this, the, certain things would be giving you away. Hmm. Like with me, it was my mannerisms and talking with my hands and things, because people were always saying, sit on your hands and, you know, don't... Um, do so many gestures and things like that because it looks gay and I think I tried to adapt myself I tried to cover up quite mm, a lot of mm, things you do you do and and that was you, you were trying to invent a person that you wasn't mm. 
Mm. And I remember um, learning how to walk as a guy. Right. You know, like 10 to 2 and all that kind yeah. of thing, because all your friends did, you know. And, and, and that's what you tried to mimic along. Yeah. No wonder I did act in that, you know, because well, it yeah. virtually was just that I could act. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, you tried to be the person they expect you to be, mm -hmm. Yeah. rather than the person you are. Well, don't you find a lot of people in life are like that, even though they aren't transgendered? Yeah. yeah. Oh, there's, a lot there's of people want to fit in with other people. They're performing this act all along mm. and never ever come out, never be themselves. At least we have the opportunity to actually be ourselves. Mm. That's and true. I must say that when I came out and wanted to be myself, a totally different personality arose from that. Mm. So, what kind of personality do you think you was before, and what kind of personality do you think you are now? Before, as I said, I was very shy, very withdrawn. I'd rather spend time on my own than with other people, as I said before. Um, since I've transitioned, obviously I've gained a lot more friends that appreciate me for who I am. And that's made me feel more me. Um, I guess you could say I'm a little bit more open. I am still shy, always will be, I guess. But yeah, I, I enjoy my life now more than I did before, that's for sure. Because one thing that does spring to mind is I was at the GIC with my now daughter-in-law and they said to her, what do you see in Sarah that you didn't see before? And she said she smiles a lot more. And that is true, I do. Even though I'm not now, but <laughs> no, it's true, I do. I do, I'm, I'm a happier person. I think you're doing marvellously, actually. Thank you. And um, it's like any situation that you actually feel out of place with and things like this, getting nervous and that, and sometimes nerves can actually um, be very, very detrimental to what you're actually mm. trying to achieve. And I think some of the things that I learned very, very early on through, like through acting and being in front of a camera and things like that, is that, um, is focus. Is to get one thing to actually focus on and just go with that focus each time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, these are some of the things that I've tried to tell you in the past, is to focus on one thing and actually just, and just go for that. And, I think it's worked. I think it's mm. worked to a certain degree and things like that. You know, not, not all people's ways of doing things is going to work for them and no, things. No. But it's a good idea to, I think, it's a good idea to have a go. Yeah. I mean, other yeah. people have said to me, oh, Alison, try this and try that and try that. And yeah, I, I've never, ever not tried anything. Mm. Never, ever not tried anything. Um, you try and you think, no, it's not for me, I can't do that, I can't do that, I can't do that. But you find one that will actually work for you. Yeah. And yeah. that's the one to actually concentrate on, mm. you know? And um, like so many things in life, reflections on the past and the present and the future, sometimes having a direction you can go in, like a, um, a pedestal that you actually want to reach and things like this, so, we know where you are now, so where would you like to actually be in the future? That's a good question. Um, I, I can't really answer that one, if I'm honest, I don't know. Um, well, perhaps I can put it this like this. With changing factors and things like this, do certain things actually get to you and, and, and put you into a typical two-way battle, you know, you either fight or flight, so what do you th type of person do you think you are? I wouldn't say I'm a fighter, um, if need be I'd stick up for what I believe in, um, I wouldn't say I was a flighter either, I'm I, this is a difficult question that actually, I've got to be honest. Um, well let me put it around the other way then, what do you think I am? Oh you're a fighter. There's no doubt about that. Why do you Just think, because you why come you across, fight? you come across as a very confident person. That's probably because, as I said to you earlier, I have a goal to get to. Yeah. And there's always obstacles in the way, right? And you can either trip over the obstacles, or you can kick them out of the way. I'm gonna kick them out of the way. So you're probably right there. Yeah. But that's what's in the head. 
It's not that's actually yeah. happening, that's what's in the head. So yeah. Yeah, that's up that's up yeah. to you to find your way. Yeah, yeah. So, but it's an ongoing journey, shall we yeah. say. Oh god, yeah. It's an ongoing journey. You, you never stop, Sam. You no, never stop. No, it's you know, true. people always say, um, it's like people's life stories and go, My God, am I dead? Mm. Have I died? Because you'd have to die to have a life story. Yeah. And um, thank God, not quite yet, I haven't died. <laughs> I mean, I could die in the next 10 minutes, but, you know, resuscitate me, for God's sake. But anyway, so that's the way it is. But um, I hope you can resuscitate. I mean, you know, <laughs> knowing what your job is now, I hope I'm in good hands. Uh, yeah. Yes. So what kind of jobs have you had? Oh, God. Um, when I first left school, I was in the print industry. Um, is this naughty print, by the way? Uh, you never know. Funnily enough, I was involved in a little bit of pornographic well, there you material go. See, at the time. See, see, <laughs> I knew I could drag it out of her. You got it here first. Um, moving on. Uh, <laughs> from that, I carried on in the print for some time, but uh, then I've been in the building industry. Um, no, so you're good at erections then? Uh, oh, it's the big one. Wine Stop back, it. wine back, that's it. Edit, edit, edit. That's it, carry on, sorry. Um, I've also worked in the car industry um, and currently, and have done in the past, I'm now in the care sector. So, may I ask which one do you prefer? Uh, the care sector, without a doubt. Why is that? I, this is going to sound really silly, but I like the company, if I'm honest. I like talking to people, which is strange considering what such a shy person, but it just seems when I'm in that setting, I can be me. And it's just something that comes naturally to me. Um, I've always had respect for old elderly people, should we say. I know the care se se sector isn't just about elderly people, but um, that's the majority of the support users yeah. that I visit. Um, and it's just nice to, to sit and chat about their lives, and because it's not all about wiping bums. Uh, you, you get to learn to know them. Some of them even become friends, if you like. I do care about them. I care about their welfare, and it's just something that I think has come naturally to me. And I really, really enjoy my work. I really enjoy it. That's good. So obviously they treat you as a female. Yeah. Have you ever had any problems? No, no, not Not in sorry. the care industry? No. no. Have you had, ever had any problems in any of the past roles where, you've, um, where you were actually Sarah? When I first, first transitioned, um, I was very insecure and I think that showed and it wasn't so much I had problems with other people, I had problems with people knowing and now it doesn't bother me. Being found out. Yeah. Yeah, well, not even being found out, because obviously they knew I was transgender. Why did they know you were transgender? Because I told them. Okay. Um, I felt that honesty was the best policy. There's no point in lying. But I knew I was, I knew I was in my very infant stages of transitioning. Um, there were, and in some cases still are, things about myself that I'd like to change. Um, and it was those insecurities that made me feel vulnerable. I can completely understand that. Well, we're going to take a break now, mainly because I need a drink. Um, so she, won't, she, she, <laughs> won't, she won't have a drink because she said it won't improve the situation. And I said, well, I've seen you before and it's definitely improved the situation. But um, anyway, we're going to take a break now, but we'll be right back after this.